Hello viewers, I am Anuranjan Burman. Today I am going to explain about the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. Our heart is a hollow muscular organ. Our heart continuously pumps blood through a closed system of blood vessels and it ensures that it's in every tissue and cell get oxygenated blood. And it carries the deoxygenated blood from the tissue of all the body and it carries to the heart and from the heart again it will send it to the lungs for oxygen oxygenation that means there will be gas exchange carbon dioxide will be passing to the lungs and from the lungs fresh oxygen will be coming into the blood so blood will again get oxygenated and it will reach the heart Again, the heart will pump that oxygenated blood into the all tissue of the body. Uh, for doing this, heart, ha heart has two different systems. One is known as pulmonary pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary circulation means circulation of blood in between the heart and the lung. And the other system is known as the systemic circulation. Systemic circulation. Systemic circulation means circulation of blood in between the heart and all the body tissue. Now let's describe pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation in detail. The superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. These two are the largest veins of our body which carries deoxygenated blood from all the body to the heart. The superior vena cava carries deoxygenated blood from the upper part of the body into the right atrium. And the inferior vena cava carries deoxygenated blood from the lower part of the body. Lower part means the below the diaphragm and upper part means above the diaphragm. So it will both this superior and inferior vena cava carries deoxygenated blood into the right atrium. Once the right atrium of the heart is filled with blood, then the right atrium contracts. It will contract. Once the right atrium will contract then there is a valve called tricuspid valve the blood from the right atrium will pass through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle so once the blood will reach the right ventricle then the right atrium relaxes so during the relaxation the blood from the right ventricles cannot go back to the right atrium because of this tricuspid valve this valve is known as tricuspid because it has three flaps or three caps. That is why it is known as tricuspid valve. So it prevents backflow of blood from the right ventricle to the right atrium. So once the right ventricle is filled with blood, then the right ventricle will contract. There will be contraction of right ventricle. So the blood cannot go back into the right atrium. But there is another valve into the right ventricle in the in the opening of the pulmonary artery. So this is the pulmonary artery. Blue color. This is the pulmonary artery. So this is the pulmonary valve. So once the right ventricle will contract, the blood will go out from the heart through this pulmonary artery. 
once the blood emptied the right ventricle through the pulmonary artery the blood cannot come back into the right ventricle again the black flow is prevented because of the pulmonary valve this is the pulmonary valve pulmonary valve will prevent the back flow blood from the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle the pulmonary artery forms two branches one is uh, right pulmonary artery this is the right pulmonary artery which supplies the blood that means the deoxygenated blood into the right lung and another is the left pulmonary artery this left pulmonary artery supplies the blood the deoxygenated blood into the left lung in both the lungs once the deoxygenated blood will reach both the lung then there will be oxygenation oxygenation means there will be gas exchange in the alveoli so the carbon dioxide from the blood will be released and the blood will take up the oxygen from the lung it happens in the alveoli the alveoli are the only space where there will be gas exchange in the lung alveolar capillaries are very tiny vessels with a single layer of cells because of the single layer of cell oxygen and carbon dioxide can diffuse easily through them there are two pulmonary veins from each lung is connected into the left atrium that means two pulmonary veins from each lung will carry the oxygenated blood into the left atrium once the oxygenated blood is filled at the left atrium then the left atrium contracts here i will share one more point that uh, about pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein the pulmonary artery is the only artery which carries deoxygenated blood all the artery carries oxygenated blood except the pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein also all the veins carries deoxygenated blood but this pulmonary vein is the only vein which carries oxygenated blood so please remember these points yeah let's go back to the point once the left atrium is filled then the there will be contraction of the left atrium once the left atrium contracts there is a valve in between the left atrium and left ventricle this is known as bicuspid valve it is known as bicuspid valve because it has two cusp or two flaps that's why it is known as bicuspid valve blood from the left atrium after contraction it will reach the left ventricle through the bi bicuspid valve so the bicuspid valve will only allow the blood to flow in one direction that is from the left atrium to left ventricle but from left ventricle to left atrium it is not allowed so once the blood will reach the left ventricle then there will be ventricular contraction once the ventricle will contract then the blood will leave the heart through the aorta there is a valve called aortic valve this is the aortic valve this is the aortic valve the oxygenated blood will leave the left ventricle of heart through the aorta there is a valve called aortic valve aortic valve will prevent the back flow of blood into the left ventricle when there will be ventricular relaxation and it will supply to all the body parts that is the upper part of the body and the lower part of the body then the oxygenated blood will reach each and every tissue of our body and in the tissue also there will be gas exchange the tissue will take up the oxygen and the carbon dioxide released by the tissue will be taken up by the blood and again that deoxygenated blood will be carried out into the right atrium this cycle is continuously going on please remember pulmonary circulation means the circulation of the blood through the lung and the heart 
and systemic circulation means the circulation of blood through the heart and in between the whole body and you can remember uh, one more point when there will be a contraction of atrium both the atrium right atrium and left atrium it contract at the same time as well as the right ventricle and left ventricle also it contracts at the same time now you you may have a question mark how the lung can get oxygenated blood how lung can get oxygen the pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood into the lung and the blood gets purified and carried out to the heart then how the lung is getting oxygenated blood you might have that question there is another artery which is known as bronchial artery bronchial artery supplies oxygenated blood to lung tissue mainly the bronchi and the tiny air sacs the bronchial artery forms from the aorta this is all about pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation please like share and comment and those who are new to my channel please subscribe to my channel thank you